Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for the third video in our never ending book series. And last video we went ahead and we put our papers on all of the pages. So what we're gonna do this video is we're going to put in our tucks in our pockets. Um, and I've already gone through and chosen um, some different things that I wanna put in here. And then our last video will be um, doing the decorations, adding tags and things like that into our tuck spots. So the first thing I decided that I wanted, this says believe in your dreams, and I've chosen um, a green, this color box, it, this is a permanent dye ink, and it does not give, oh, it's called spearmint. So it's a nice deep green. And um, then I also chose this royal blue, also color box, this one is a pigment ink. And so those were the colors I chose. I decided I wanted, you know, like a, a color that would stand out a little bit. Um, and so those are the two colors I'm gonna be using throughout the book. I do have most all of these, um, you know, ready. I had to go through and decide what I wanted. We have to remember as we're doing them, um, you know, like how many pockets and tuck spots we put in because you don't want these never-ending books to be too big, um, too fat. You know, this is not like a regular junk journal where, you know, a lot of people like that fat mouth on them. Um, but with this one, because you have to go one way and then the other, you don't want to um, have anything that's too bulky in these books because you want them to sit nicely and open nicely. And so I'm just using Fabri-Tac today because it's quick and it's got a nice quick grab. And on this one, I'm going to not go all the way out. I'm gonna go like maybe a half an inch from the edge just to let that edge be free instead of just stuck right down to the paper. It will give it, let it have a little bit of movement if it decides it wants to. So then I'm just gonna put this one on here at an angle. And I just thought that that piece of muslin behind the stamp really looked pretty. And when I stamp, I really prefer to stamp on something and then cut it out to put it in my books because I am not the best stamper. So on this side, what I've done is I have done, this is a pocket, but also, it will fold out as a writing space. So we are going to go ahead and just glue these three sides. And wipe that, whoops, wipe that glue off of there. Okay, so we're going to do this side, the top, not the folded edge because the folded edge needs to be in the middle so that it will open up this way. If you accidentally glue the folded edge down, it's not that big of a deal, it will just open out and whoever has it will need to just use a writing board underneath of it to write on it. So every, I almost just, I keep wanting to glue that folded side. So this way we will have a writing spot and a little pocket. So I just made that big enough to cover not quite half, a little bit more than a third. And you just choose whatever. Oop, I got a little bit of glue on there, so I'm going to just get that off of there right now. There we go. That is the nice thing about the Fabri-Tac. It kind of just rolls up and comes off if you get too much or if you get it someplace that you don't want it. So, and then also I stenciled some butterflies on here and that was a jot stencil from the Dollar Tree. So let's open this up and I wanna open it up to make sure that it does not glue itself together. And so I think that page is really pretty and it really doesn't need, I've got a little bit of Punchinella that I put in the background and I did a lot of that ahead of time because, you know, I wanted this book to be a tutorial on how to put everything together. It takes me forever. I've been working on just figuring out this part of it for hours. Um, you know, I mean, it's been over like 
a couple of weeks time but I keep going back to it and spending an hour here and an hour there just trying to figure out what I want to do with it so I'm just it takes me a while to figure out how to decorate and I think that it takes everyone a while so don't think that you're just going to like pop it together and it's going to be done you can do that if you're good at that but you know if it's taking you a while don't think that oh well everybody else does them really fast because I really don't think they do um not everybody some people can but and even when I do these um you know I have things kind of figured out in my head ahead of time so on this page here I want to do um just two pockets and we'll put a nice thin tag on each side and what I've done was to make this pocket sturdier I have folded it over now that gives us a little bulk in our book but this is regular scrapbooking paper so it's not um, cardstock if it was cardstock I wouldn't feel the need to fold it over because cardstock is very heavy but if when it's just paper if you fold it over on the part where you're going to be putting your tags in that just goes ahead and makes it just sturdier on that spot so the paper doesn't get torn as someone is taking the tags out and putting them back in. And I'm just kind of going over to the side here so that I get the glue over there instead of right here. And so, a little bit of glue on there so I want to kind of just wipe it so I don't glue my pocket to my page. There we go. So we're going to put those in there like that. And this one, I'm going to, I've got just a little bit of the white where it was folded kind of crooked. So I'm going to cut that off. And I did not edge these, but I think that I am going to. So, um, and then when I, I wanted to tell you, when I got the green out, it was fine. When I got out the royal blue, and I also got out moody blue which is more of a turquoisey color they were both completely dry and so I sprayed them both with just a little bit of water or a little bit of I sprayed them with just a little bit of water but you can also spray them with a little bit of water with just a touch of glycerin in it that would be better if you have some like that I just couldn't find my bottle that was water and glycerin so I spritzed it with a little water and just kind of smushed it in with a credit card because I knew that this was not used up the other one I wasn't sure of because I use that one a lot and so this one came back just fine the other one really does not have much ink left in it so but whenever you have a pad that's dry um, you can go ahead and just get it wet and then you need to let it set for quite a while work the water in a little bit and I just sprayed it just a few spritzes of water um, not, you know, like I didn't run water onto it or anything like that. You don't want that much water on there. And, um, and then just let them sit. And I work it in and I let it sit like that for quite a while. Then I turn it upside down and let it sit like that for a while so that all the ink that and the water that kind of mixed up and soaked in will now raise back up to the top. So I just put the lid on it. And then I just let it sit upside down after it has had a chance for the water and the ink to combine. Maybe four or five hours like this. And then flip it over and the next morning you should be good to go. And you really don't have to wait that long. It really does reconstitute fairly fast. But the longer you wait the better it, it kind of gets. You know as far as at least wait three or four hours maybe. Okay so this is what we have here and I want to put some tags in here and um, maybe stamp on a piece of paper or something and put that up here or put maybe a little banner or something up here. So that's what we're gonna have for this page. I'm gonna just, because I want these to be pockets, I'm going to glue both sides and the bottom while I'm waiting for this to, if you leave it sit this way, it spits out the top. If you turn it back upright, it takes forever to get to the bottom. I've heard there's something you can mix with it. I'm not really sure what it is. I think that I've heard acetone. I think that's kind of like a fingernail polish or something, a remover. Um, I don't know. I've never tried it. I just use it like this. It takes a few minutes, but considering the fact that the glue dries so quick, um, you know, even having it take just a little bit longer is not really doesn't take you any longer because your glue dries quicker so you can move on faster. 
So, but there's also one called Beacons 3-in-1. This is Beacons Fabri-Tac, and I never buy it full price. I think it's like $16 at Joann's. I only buy it if I have a 60% off coupon. And I don't use it all the time. I really mostly only use it for videos, just because it's quicker and I can move on faster. When I'm doing my own, I normally, if I'm just making this without um, videoing it, um, normally what I do is I use um, tacky glue, which I get at the Dollar Tree, and um, then I just put a piece of parchment, when I shut the book, I just put a piece of, piece of parchment in there because the tacky glue is not gonna be dry by the time I wanna go to the next page. So I put a piece of parchment so it doesn't glue itself together, and I just move right on. So don't think that you have to have this type of glue in order to make a journal. I know you see a lot of people use it on their videos, and I'm pretty sure most of them use it for exactly the same reason. It's a good glue, but tacky glue is a good glue too. It just takes a while to dry. So if I had done this with tacky glue, I would just take a piece of parchment paper, I would just put it in there, and turn the page and go to the next page. And I would do that on each page. And that parchment paper is gonna keep it from sticking. So you don't have to use this. Alrighty, and then on this one, this says dream a little dream. My stamp didn't stamp the best here. So I pulled out a silver um, gel pen and went ahead and went over it. It was, those where the letters are, it was just empty and you could see this behind it and it just was not, it wasn't the best looking stamp and actually I think I had to stamp it three times to get it this good so um, sometimes that just happens you get a stamp that just doesn't want to work quite right and so you work on it which with me everything else did eventually come out really well I needed to put a little pad underneath of it to give it a little bit of sponge so that um, stamp could push into the paper more and then I still didn't like the way the words looked so I went over them with the gel pen and I really like the way that it looks now so and this one is going to be a belly band right in the middle and again I did these ones with green wipe off that great big lump of glue and you know this really only does this mostly when the glue is starting to get very thick when it's starting to get low and old. It doesn't do that when it's brand new. And this one I have not decided if I want to put anything on here or not. It needs something, I think, but I have not figured out what yet. But so we will probably be putting something on there and putting something in there because it's a belly band. And whatever we're going to tuck in, we have to remember to keep them kind of thin. So, and on this page, <coughs> excuse me, on this page, I wanted to do a side pocket and do a little flip up. So this one will flip up like this for writing. Now I did put some little butterflies on here and so that will be a little bit bumpy writing on those but this will be good and you know it, it won't be that bad because they're not super thick. And then I went ahead and stenciled some butterflies here with a little bit of punchinella. Now and um, another stencil here. This punchinella that I have and I use it all the time. It lasts forever. You don't need a great big huge amount of punchinella. I've had this for a really long time. This was a bow at the Dollar Tree um, in the uh, wrapping section. And um, so I just went ahead and took it apart and wound up with um, this much of it that was really pretty good. And this is what I use. So you don't need to, you know, buy anything super special. And if you don't have this, take a piece of uh, cardstock and use your hole punch and punch a bunch of holes. And you don't need this many. You know, if you just have a little spot, you know, go all the way around from just a little square and just reach in as far as you can, make them kind of random, works just exactly the same. So don't think you have to have that in order to do it. And let's see, this stencil here, I think that this one is a Martha Stewart stencil. I'm not sure, I don't have, and it's like this. And this one is a self-adhesive one. I just left it right on the 
the paper um, and just put it on there and stenciled with it. But if you wanted, you could take this off and it will stick to your paper. Those are sometimes nice, especially if you're using paint. The ones with the stickier, with the sticky back are nice because then the paint doesn't go underneath. I don't usually have a problem with, let's see, I'm gonna do the top, the bottom, and the outside edge. Um, I don't have a problem usually with ink going underneath my stencils, only paint. And then that just means you put too much paint on your sponge and you need to do, you know, wipe it off a or tap it off a little bit before you stencil with paint. And we'll get there. And I have a really pretty butterfly stencil. Um, it's a background one, so it's got little butterflies all over the whole thing. And I really like that one. And it is with a project somewhere um, that I was using it on, and I don't know where. So, in order to have a butterfly stencil, because I just did not want to, I don't like to stamp in my book once I get it together. I'd prefer to do any stamping before I put it together, because that way, if I make a mistake, I can always change that page out for another one. Stenciling, I like better because I can control a stencil if I'm using ink. Now using paint, that's another story. But um, we're gonna put this one on. We're just gonna put glue there and there. And, okay, let's see, this one goes like this, so my glue's gonna go here. And you know, well, I'm going to leave it as a tuck. I was thinking maybe I don't want it to be a tuck because I've already got a, a pocket over here and I don't want it to be too thick. But I'll leave it as a tuck just in case I decide I want to tuck something in there. But I could have just glued the whole thing down and just made it a writing space. And once I get everything in there, I may find that I don't want to put anything inside there uh, because it would make it too fat. So get that in there well. But I couldn't find my stencil for my butterflies. These are butterflies I just punched out of some blue cardstock. And then what I did after I punched them out, I just set the piece of punchinella on top of them. And I just laid them all out, put the punchinella on top, and um, just used the same blue ink as I have everywhere else and just polka dotted them. And I thought that that turned out really cute. But I... Um, these are the butterflies that I punched out to use. And so all I did was I couldn't find my stencil, so I used these butterflies to go ahead and just um, put them on here wherever I wanted them, just kind of randomly, just put them on there like that, and used my ink to go ahead and put the butterflies on the page. So you don't even have to have a stencil. If you've got a punch, punch it out. You can punch it out one time. As a matter of fact, I used these two together once, and then every other one of these, I did them just one at a time. So you don't have to have a great big huge stencil. You can only stencil in one spot at a time, so what does it matter if you need to maybe move this? Again, if you're using paint, paint might get underneath your stencil. Then if you have to move it a lot, you want to be careful to wipe that back off if you get paint on the back of it. So there is that page completed. And then this one, I just have a writing spot here. And um, I put a little punchinelle on that and edged it. And it's just a pretty butterfly. Again, I used the same stencils here on here. Now, when I first started with the green, it was really, really dark. So what I would do is I would wipe my sponge off quite a bit before I put the stencil on so that it didn't get that just really dark, dark, solid green on there. And, um, you know, so if you decide that your, your ink is too dark, but that's the ink that you have, um, all you have to do is just, and trying to put it on, putting your ink right on your sponge, and then just trying to press lightly. Now, I did press lightly on here, but if you've got really dark ink, um, it could still leave some really dark marks. So if you just wipe your sponge down a little bit, then you'll have a lighter green, and then just press lightly. And then on these ones, um, after I did them, I put the lined the stencil back up on there again, and I used a little bit of blue punchinella 
on those butterflies, which I thought looked really pretty, just to give them some depth because, and then this is gonna slide in here, um, you know, because I didn't want them to just be plain green. On this side, I think I'm going to put a word or something. Um, so that is done because I think that's beautiful. And we're to the back of our book. When we open up this one, on this one, I'm gonna leave the front page um, for some type of a nice um, focal point like we did here. And so I'm going to just put a pocket on this side that we can put a tag or a journaling card in. And usually I like to get my pockets in and then decide what I want for tags and journaling cards because it's kind of, um, they're kind of a different process. So just, just getting all of your pockets and, and tucks and everything together, it's mostly just paper and gluing um, and maybe a little bit of just background on your pages. Whereas then once you get to the tags or the journaling spots, you're probably gonna have some stamping or some um, cutouts to put on there, or you know, it's just kind of a different process. So that's why I usually do them in, in steps, kind of. Okay, now on this one, I thought this was really pretty. It had just that little bit of uh, flower in the corner. So I decided that I wanted to make that one again a tuck writing spot. And I decided because this was mostly purple, it does have a lot of green in here, but I did not want to edge this one with the blue or the green. And I really did not want to edge it with a different color. And so I'm not going to edge this page. You don't have to edge everything. You edge what would look good, and I don't think that this one would look good edged. So I'm again going to glue the two sides and leave it as a tuck spot, just in case I want to tuck something in. And on this one, I'm pretty sure I am going to want to tuck something in, because I'm not. the other side is going to be just decorative. So my tag, or my writing spot in on this one, is going to be in this tuck spot here. Yeah, make sure we open that up so that it doesn't glue down. And then I did punch out some butterflies that I thought would look really cute on here. Just kind of like that. And then just one over here just to kind of tie the two sides together. And I think that this lighter one, yeah, that lighter one went over there. And I do kind of fiddle with them to see how I want them to, how I want them to face. I think I like that look. And with these, I'm going to use stick glue. They're flat. They're not going to be moved around, opened and closed. So stick glue works just fine. I don't like stick glue to glue on a pocket or anything like that because you're going to be putting stuff in and out and in and out. And so you want something sturdier. But when it comes to something that's just being glued right flat on a page, you don't have to use any kind of a heavy glue. And this is a permanent stick glue. So, we'll get this last one on here. And I want those to be nice and flat because we're going to be tucking something in there. So I don't want them sticking up off the page. You could leave this one sticking off the page if you wanted to because there's not going to be anything tucked on the other side. But I like it the way it is. And then I think what I'm going to do is use a little bit of Wink of Stella or something to kind of just brighten them up. Glit just not really brighten them up, just give them a little bit of um, a little bit of pop. They'll just be a little bit sparkly. And I'm thinking because that just totally got lost. I'm going to put this butterfly right there. 
Okay, and so that takes care of that page. The center spread on this one, I'm leaving because I love it. So this one is going to get some decoration, but it's not getting pockets or tucks or anything that's gonna cover that up. And then this one is also going to have a belly band on this side, and I have not decided what I'm going to do on this side yet. Or was the belly band on this side? Let me kind of, well really the belly band does not matter what I've got in other places because they're in the middle. But you might want to do something on, you know, this side and then something on this side so when you fold them up, you know, they're in different, this one would be here and this one would be here. But, let's see, what do we have here? That's on that side. We're going to put this one on this side because on the other page, wait a minute. No, that was a belly band. I like belly bands because you can tuck so many different things into them. I don't know why. They really aren't any different than pockets or whatever, but I do just like the belly bands. I know why, because you only have to glue two, the top and the bottom. You don't have to glue one of the sides. See, saves you a whole ton of glue. Just decent. Alrighty, yes, I really do think I want it on this side. No. I don't because on the next page I have a pocket on this side so I want some interest on this side get that off of there okay and I think I'm gonna put some punched out butterflies possibly on this side or some of my store-bought butterflies and then on this side I have a pocket, again, that opens up for writing. And if you have scrapbook paper, you don't need scrapbook paper with pictures on it. Um, if you have scrapbook paper with pictures on it, use the pictures, you know, I mean, see if you can, you know, I mean, I cut off a lot of this bird, but his head was, his face was very pretty. So I thought that would look really cute, even though I cut off his body. But, um, if you don't have scrapbook paper with pictures on it, cut a bird out of a book. And you can cut a bird out of a book and just put his head on there. You don't have to use the whole bird. So don't think that you have to go buy scrapbooking paper that has pictures on it um, because some people use them in their journals with that picture. No one's going to know that your bird came out of a, let's say, a encyclopedia versus um, being a stamp that you bought or, you know, a sticker that you bought or whatever. Once you cut them out, they look just like everybody else's. And thing is, they won't be like everybody else's because yours is going to be unique. That is the best part about, you know, when you're working on a budget and you're, you're doing things like cutting your pictures out of magazines and books and that type of thing, and you think, oh, well, you know, like, it's not as good as everybody else's. You're right. It's better. Because now you have an individual project that you're creating that no one else is going to have exactly the same thing. Because they didn't go buy this paper pad that had this bird in it. And, you know, there's a hundred people that put that bird in there in their um, journal. So so don't think that, that your journal is less because you used your own things. That actually makes them more. So here we go. Here's our first page. And so here we have, let's just grab a little piece of paper. So here we just have our decorative, believe in your, in your dreams. And then on this side, we have a pocket here and, ooh, almost glued that down. And a writing space there. And that one does, when I inked that one, the ink did come through a little bit right there in the center when I ink this edge. It isn't going to hurt anything. When you're writing, that little tiny bit of green isn't going to make a difference. And then on this side, we have a pocket here. And we have a pocket there. As we go to the next one, we have another decorative piece and a belly band. The next page, we have a pocket here and a pocket here, and a writing spot here. 
And here we have a belly band with a writing space to go spot to go underneath the belly band like this. And now this one, um, I'm going to take it out because I want to let that dry better before I leave it in there. And we're back to the start of the book, so we're going to keep on going. We have a pocket here, and we have a writing spot here, along with a pocket here. We're going to leave this as a spread. And then here we have another belly band here. And a pocket here. Ooh, I must have got just a little bit of glue under that because it was a little bit stuck, but we've got it open. We have a pocket here with a writing spot here. And we are now back to the beginning of our never-ending book. So the, the last video will be, there will be one or two. I'm hoping I can get it done in one. I'll have everything kind of ready like we did today. Um, and that video will be um, putting in all the tags and doing any last minute decorating that we need to do. So I hope you're enjoying this series. Tomorrow will be either the last or the next to last um, video for the series. And I really do appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.